Hey everyone, Aaron here with Stu the Bus. I wanted to do a quick video today about solar panel tilting. Uh, we're just gonna do a quick, not hopefully super in-depth video on why you should tilt your panels and how we did it and what the benefits are versus drawbacks. Um, so let's get into it. The main reason why you tilt your solar panels is to get more power out of them, uh, especially during winter months when the, su when the sun is a lot lower in the sky. Uh, this obviously is a regional thing. If you are closer to the equator, you don't have to worry about it as much. But where we're from, the Pacific Northwest, the days are really, really short in the winter and the sun's really low. And in the summer, it's higher, but it's still not right in the middle of the sky like you would be right at the equator. So that's the main reason why you get more power. The panels are tilted to be more perpendicular with the sun. So that's the general concept. And what results in that is just more power output. So even like right now we're in sunny Southern California and we still have them tilted because there's not really that many good hours of sunlight in the day unless you tilt them up. So that's the main reason. As far as doing it DIY or buying kits and installing those yourself, we went with a totally custom setup for a few different reasons that I'll get into in a sec. But if you don't want to go that route, there are really nice pre-made kits from Renogy and all sorts of brands. Um, we were looking at those first, but we have bigger panels than the ones they make for the kits, at least that we could find. Most of the Renogy ones are for smaller 100 watt panels and we have 160 watt panels. So, and we also wanted to tilt them the long way instead of side to side. So that's another thing to consider when you're looking at if you want to do an existing kit and install that yourself or make something totally new. I think with all the different product or materials testing I went through, I probably spent more money on this version than just buying two kits, but the two kits wouldn't have even worked on our small or our bigger panels anyway, excuse me. Um, and they don't tilt the right way. So we didn't really have any options. So it was a little more expensive, but it's still around a couple hundred bucks, maybe tops, but not too bad. And it's definitely worth it for us in our case. So getting to all those materials and tools, it was a pretty, once I did some prototyping for it, um, it went relatively smooth for a bus project. If you guys have watched any of our other videos or any other conversion type channel, I'm sure you've seen frustration and <laughs> workarounds, weird stuff happens in bus builds. That's that's what I'm getting at here. But for the most part, it was straight ahead. I think it took a couple days to kind of do research and decide what I wanted to do. But then once I got started, I did it in like an afternoon, well into the evening, but it wasn't so bad. So materials wise, we used all angle aluminum and then just certain different hardware pieces. All I did was take off all the normal Renogy brackets that are similar to all the other kind of Z brackets that you see that just go straight onto metal or wood. We took all those off and then I used the existing holes on that and made angle aluminum L brackets and just drilled holes through those. Um, I guess that's actually for the back part. It has those angle aluminum brackets. And then on the front, there's actually just heavy duty door hinges. So one hinge on each side of the panel. And then that's what lets the whole panel tilt up. And I did eighth inch thick angled aluminum all the way across the panel and then drilled holes in that where the hinges go. So um, that just enables the panels to tilt like really far up. Actually, I was kind of surprised. So front has the hinges and then the back has um, thinner angle aluminum. I think it's 1 16th inch angle aluminum pieces that I just drilled, I think, a 3 8 inch hole through. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's 3 8 inch hole on either end of all four tilting arms. I won't call them sticks anymore because they're not sticks, but I always call them sticks. Tilting arms. 
Um, and then you just put hitch pins through those holes into the holes of the that I put on the panels. So it's a pretty straightforward, it's like really simple. Um, it doesn't necessarily lock. Each panel has a, I think they're called cotter pins that lock one side in when they're fully down. But then on the outside of each panel, I just went with like a regular kind of hitch pin that you pull out um, that doesn't lock. I was kind of worried about that, but it's been good for the last almost year that we've had it. Um, and then when they're, when they're tilted up, there's obviously four different pins, one on each end of two sticks for each panel. Um, but then we added, so that it was, it would kind of like wobble a little bit because not all of them had that cotter pin that you could slide in in a different spot to tighten it up. But I didn't want to spend all that money on all of the cotter pins and everything because even just regular hitch pins are pretty expensive. So long story long, I just wrap a bungee cord around each of the tilting arms and that holds it really tight. The main concern would be wind, right? With the panels tilted up and it's been really windy here and I've only put them down once or twice when the gusts get really out of control, but we've had a couple pretty consistently like 15 to 20 mile per hour wind days and they don't even rattle at all. So it's a really sturdy alternative to most of those kits like I was talking about earlier. We'll just have a thumb screw and then you screw it in to a like a like a nut or something on the other side. I I wanted to go that route at first, but just the way we have our panel set up, it's really hard to get your hands like underneath the things and like especially on the outer panels, the outer side of each panel, it's way easier to just pull that hitch pin or slide the hitch pin in when I'm like standing in the middle of the bus reaching out to the edge. So there's all sorts of things you can do. And there are probably more secure ways to do it. But when it's in drive mode, when it's flat, like I said, each inside clip has like the cutter pin that's, it can't come out. And then the outer ones are still really solid, but technically they can slide in and out. But I always check them before and after we drive and it's not going to go anywhere. Um, the kits might be a little more sturdy Definitely more sturdy than our setup is if we don't have the bungee cords pulling the arms tight. But with the bungee cords, it's fine. And I don't really have to worry about going up there in the middle of the night if a breeze comes out of nowhere um, to put them down every night. Because that was super annoying. I would pretty much put them down every night that I thought it could get semi-windy before the bungee cords. But now with the bungee cords, it's good. Don't have to worry about it. So that's pretty much all we did. Um, I just made that front bar and put the hinges, the door hinges on the front. And then the back for the tilt arms has the brackets. And all I did to line those up was use the pre-existing holes where the old feet used to go. And then I folded the panel down and then lined up where the bracket on the wood needed to go. And there wasn't even really that much measuring. There was just more marking stuff off with pencil and making sure that stuff lined up. And it's been working out pretty great. All of our stuff's in parallel. So 12 volt coming in from the two 160 watt panels into the charge controller here into our 300 amp hours of sealed AGM batteries. Get that out of the way first. Um, so normally only pulling in seven or eight amps, which honestly isn't really that much. Um, it got us by, but if we had a day or two of clouds in a row, it was really rough on the batteries. So when we tilt the panels, if we need all the power to come in as much as it can go, I've seen it jump all the way to, you. it's usually a solid 12 to 13 amps. And I've even seen it hit 14 amps before so going from 7 or 8 to 12 to 14 that's a big jump
So I know in the start of video, I said I wasn't going to get too in-depth on technical stuff, but I can't help it. So when we were researching why and how to tilt your panels, obviously the concern came up of how much do you tilt them and when, when do you want it? So there's an easy chart that I found somewhere. Basically, you just take the latitude of wherever you're at you can just Google it, Flagstaff, Arizona, Latitude or something. So whatever that number is, if you're in the middle of summer, you add, or you subtract, sorry, 15 degrees from that, and that gives you the angle of the tilt of your panels. So for Seattle, Washington, where we're from, the latitude there is 48 degrees, and in summer, you would subtract 15 degrees from that and that's the optimal generally speaking optimal angle to get the most out of your solar panels then for the winter you add 15 degrees um so seattle's very extreme it's 48 degrees latitude and in the winter they have to be all the way at 63 degrees to fully optimize the sun which is pretty wild and then in summer you subtract 15 so it's 33 degrees. That's kind of a simple, easy cheat sheet that I saw from, I don't exactly know where, I can't source it from anywhere, but find your latitude wherever you're at at the time, add 15 in the winter, subtract 15 in the summer, and that's your optimal angle. So we didn't want to go with the pre-made kits for the tilting, mainly because we always try and park with the nose of the bus pointing south um, for heat issues. We found that when we park our metal tube of a house sideways and it just roasts in the sun all day, it gets really hot. And it still gets hot in the morning on the driver's side of the bus and then passenger side in the afternoon, but we've found it's a lot less. So we kind of just always generally park the nose south if possible. So that takes the brunt of the sun and we have reflectix up in the windshield and the passenger door. So that block or the driver window as well. So it's kind of a little cocoon up there and it blocks out a lot of the sun. The nose still gets pretty hot, but we've just noticed over the last couple of years that we like that and it gets a lot less hot. That's a main reason why we did the DIY instead of buying the kits, besides the fact that they just aren't big enough for our panels, we wanted it to tilt up this way instead of side to side. Um, also, the side to side kits probably would have worked with our panels because they're kind of like this with a little walkway between. But if you tilt one up, we were kind of afraid they might have been too close and like the one panel would shade the other panel, which our panels are in parallel, so shading isn't as bad as if you had series set up, but we didn't want to have to worry about that. So we just tilted them forward and now we can still point south and that's where you want to point anyway to get more sun throughout the day, especially in winter months. So that worked out. Overall, to have that big of an increase, and all I have to do is get up on the deck really quick and put the tilting arms up, it's really not that bad. Also, before we wrap it up here, it usually only takes about two to three minutes um, if I don't hit any hiccups <laughs> with the weird hitch pins, but set up and take down is really fast, two or three minutes. Um, I do have to get up on the roof, which is kind of a pain, and I've seen some people do... Um, there's all sorts of different ways. Like you could use gas struts. I've seen like automated just on a switch from inside, which is super cool, but that's obviously a lot more involved and a lot more expensive, but those are also options as well. So this was kind of just a down and dirty version, but so far we've been really liking it and it adds a lot of power to our system. So those are all the benefits. Um, the only drawback I could kind of see is like I just mentioned, having to climb up on the roof. Um, that's not really a problem for me yet anyway. And I don't really mind it. We get up on the deck a lot. 
Um, I get up on the deck a lot to clean the solar panels off. So that's another benefit. <laughs> um, they're easier to clean when they're tilted. And yeah, I don't think there's really too many drawbacks. We store the legs just behind our seat on top of our little ladder. Um, so they stow away really nice and they don't really take up that much space, which living in a tiny, less than 100 square foot bus is always really nice to add that much power with minimal space. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, let us know below. Um, more than happy to help brainstorm for your specific project and yeah if you liked it give it a like if you didn't that's cool too hopefully you learned something and uh yeah we'll see you guys in the next video